Thank you for joining us. This is Paul Wilson. And Chris Empty. And we are the Diesel Performance Podcast in a new temporary studio, we'll call it. Yeah, realistically, so let's lay it on everyone. Um, We are moving shops. Yep. Okay, so we are currently located in Marengo, Illinois. We're in like a 16,000 square foot building. Yeah, right, with everything. Four, 14, yeah. 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 Uh, literally, we're tripling in size, the building-wise. Right. We're going to expand a couple things. We, we had a second building that we did for like shipping and receiving and whatnot, and uh, we just want to keep everything under one roof. Um, so we're growing and moving in a good way. Yeah. Um, but in the midst of that, uh, we have set up a new podcast studio in the middle of what at the shop we call Bay 3, which right. used to be our turbo center. Okay, it's been a lot of things. Center, yeah. I was just joking about this. So, so we're in the we're in the main building now. We had been in the remote building yep. uh, the whole time the podcast has been going, give or take. Uh, when when they set that up, our our old producer he had he had built a studio in his office. Yes. So even that was like a DIY studio where it, it was, was really moving blankets nailed to the wall. Right. Uh, but there was th- there was nothing else in there besides podcast equipment and moving blankets nailed to the wall. So now that we are in a temporary spot where we are in a, a space that at one time was storage for boxes from the old building, uh, then it was storage for vehicles that were being worked on long term, yeah. had Literally. engines out. Yeah, we had the Durburb in here for a year. I'm staring at it right now, but the Burb was in here for a year with a blown motor right right yeah um and and so then it then it became the turbo bay turbo bay uh so then they manufactured the stealth turbos back here for about a year two years two years uh and then now they have moved to the new building uh that chris was was referring to process one and media marketing podcast studio we are mocked up like chris said just literally in the middle of the floor with podcast blankets draped around things uh so if the sound quality is a little bit different for the next few episodes bear with us yeah we're working on it we're we're waiting to settle in uh i have i have requested a ridiculous budget uh for the new podcast studio so i'm sure you know a fraction of that will get approved and uh we'll be back to that top quality sound production we're used to it's one of those things where uh you have an idea in mind of what you need you yep. ask for eight times that. Is that what you get what you wanted, right? That's how it works. I thought back to your advice about a budget on a build for a truck, and yeah. I figured a budget on a build for a podcast studio should be pretty similar. You know, Take your hey, budget, double it, and throw it out the window. I've learned a lot this year. Houses are the same way, like any project. It's just any project. It's not just vehicles. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah, so we got a lot of new things going on, uh, and that's really what we wanted to provide today. We, we did that great ride along uh, in kind of comparison with you and Joe Hager yeah. on our last episode. And now on this episode, uh, we wanted to just kind of talk about some of the updates and some of the new things that we're looking forward to here in 2019. Yeah. This is our first official recording. Uh, in 2019 to do this uh before we dive too far in though chris i did want to give a shout out to one of our sponsors which is exergy performance they've been a sponsor of the show since the start of it they're a really great group of guys they provide top quality and i do mean absolute top quality high pressure fuel system upgrades for your diesel trucks yeah um pretty much anytime i uh, spec a build here at the shop or my personal stuff even before i ever worked here um I had their components in my motors, so yeah, you know they are in my 15 now. You know, pump, not injectors just yet, but uh, soon enough. Yeah, well, yeah. And and speaking of your 15, uh, yeah. I thought that the nice segue there. Let's jump on it. Yeah, okay. Uh, your 15. We have a little bit of an update. We've done cold weather episodes in the past. We literally launched a cold weather video. <laughs> I want to say a week before <laughs> my little debacle. So yeah, here's a little background. Um, I've uh, I'm 29. I've had diesel since I was 17. Um, I have never once in my life invested money into anti-gel additive, nothing. I, I don't believe in it. I don't run it. Um, to all the people that are out there going to be analytical and email me afterwards, like, how could you say that? I don't care. Okay, <laughs> It is what it is. I've seen too many people gel up from it. Um, or they have additive and they gel up. Or I've heard all these, you know, put gasoline in your tank or put kerosene in your tank, yada, yada, yada. Reality of it is, guys, 12 years of diesel ownership, and I've always owned a diesel, whether it's TDI, Cummins, Duramax, Power Stroke, it doesn't matter. I've owned them. Yeah. Um, never gelled. So uh, I bought a house last month. Uh, my truck fits in the garage. Uh, I was lazy, did not want to park my truck in the garage. It's a heated garage, by the way. Um, so I was just <laughs> nice like, brag, yeah, bro. double whammy. So it was like <laughs> negative 15 that morning or that night. Uh, let the truck run out in my driveway for 15 minutes, you know, remote start, fired right up. So ignored the cold weather 
diesel insights video remote start that bitch. right uh i don't care <laughs> um i get halfway to work and i have about a 30 minute uh commute you know from where my new house is to where we're at now in marengo and uh just over halfway to work man and the truck's cutting out i look at my mm3 uh, gauge display and fuel uh, pressure uh, rail pressure is going from 15,000 to 400 <laughs> and the truck's like convulsing going jumping back in and out and i'm like son of a bitch so i'm like i'm just gonna limp this thing like no you know, it had a half a tank in there i keep getting fuel from one station and one station only which we'll dive into a little bit more in a second yeah um so i turn onto the main road which it's about an eight or nine mile stretch straight to get to our shop of uh, route 176 and the truck won't go over eight miles an hour. Basically, I'm idling down the road. I idled down the road for another mile. Truck shut off. Called one of the guys at the shop here. Um, he's got a <laughs> brand new uh, Ford F-250. Yeah. Shout out to Timmy. Um, Timmy ended up uh, towing me. And by towing me, we uh, did a ratchet trip from truck yes. to truck. All and the class. Yeah, just pull down. You know. Two guys two guys with $60,000 plus vehicles <laughs> <laughs> ratchet strapped to each just other. Just doing some hood ratchet. Yeah. I'm not paying for a tow. Yeah. Fuck that. <laughs> um, so get it to the shop. Uh, we put some 911 in there. Um, park it, you know, in the shop. Our shop's like 65, 70 degrees, you know, pretty much yeah. year round. So uh, left it in there for the day. All sure. fucking day, by the way. Yep, all day in our in, in the podcast studio, pretty much. <laughs> um, in Paul's office, uh, Bay 3. And uh, got the truck, you know, fired up, drove it home, went to a different fuel station, filled it up all the way. And I am a big advocate. I never let the fuel tank go be- below a half a tank generally. Okay. And this was like right there. But, uh, so I've been dealing with the same fuel station, which is on the way to work um, mm-hmm. religiously for about a year now. Did you notice that diesel prices went up as it got cold? Uh, not this place. So this place has been dropping, right? And <laughs> I'm not going to lie. There's multiple stations in a row, but it's a BP and, you know, lowest in the area. I'm like, yeah, whatever. It's never served me wrong. But for the truck to do that, like that's it's just got to be the quality of the fuel. Drop the water separator. And there was a little bit of gelling, not much. But, uh, you know, the water separator it was like fucking water. It was like yellow. So, you know, it is what it is. I live and learn. Um, Am I running additive still? No, no, I'm not. Um, I'm just switching my fuel stations. We're we're coming up to negative tomorrow is yeah. yeah. From when we're recording this, I don't know from when they'll hear this, but we're coming up to a super cold day. It'll be the coldest day of the winter uh, and the year for sure. Um, you, you know, plan, you're not planning on running any house in it, uh, anything talking, like that preventatively. I was talking to one of our, uh, or are you just going to park in the garage? Like I'm going to park in the garage. I'm going to okay. do it that way. But, uh, I was Pussy. talking to one of our old sponsor, uh, sled pole, uh, guys, uh, Lee Stilts. Yeah. And Lee, you know, uh, big diesel guy has been for years and he's a firm believer in, in running kerosene in uh, a gallon of kerosene and a tank of fuel sure so he was like you know just get a five gallon bucket of that or a five gallon thing of that leave it in the garage and just try it so um if i buckle or do anything it might be that but uh <sighs> as of right now there other than maybe a little bit of remnants of 911 that's in my tank there is no additive so. okay a few things on that one lee's friend of the show has been on the show uh mm-hmm. if you guys want to go back and listen to his episode lee stilts uh sled pull something about sled pulling lly and sled yeah, pulling something stock, like that two five two yeah. six i mean he's been around the block you know, so, he's got a couple duramaxes yeah. built motor trucks I mean, he's been around so. great guy great great episode in the yeah. archive you guys should definitely go listen to that uh number two parking in the garage solves the problem like if you're if you have a heated garage I mean, and you park in the garage, let, let's there is no longer a concern. Let's touch on this. How do you get a truck to ungel, or how do you get or prevent a truck from gelling? Park it and leave it for a decent amount of time in an area where it's above freezing. Yeah, that's you're it. not allowing the fuel to gel or get to that you know substance or that that. Uh, uh, whatever that state, if you will. Right. Yeah. So so you need to get it to to thaw. Yep. Is, is what we're going after here. So. So with diesel gelling, uh, I don't like 911. 911 has a tendency to pour a hole through the through the wax. So mm-hmm. diesel gels up; it becomes literally like a paraffin wax. Yep. Go on YouTube, look it up. It'll show you a really good example of it. Nasty. Uh, so 911 will will penetrate through that wax and get a hole going. Uh, so if you have like the top film of like the bottom of your eighth of a tank of fuel, if that's actually gelled, uh, which would be a really bad circumstance to leave yourself right. in to park it on an eighth of a tank overnight mm-hmm. like that um that's a problem right um 
so 911 in a very very rare circumstance i think could work to get your vehicle moved you know you're stuck on the side of the road and you need to make it a mile down the road hey you know what a bottle of 911 or the, the recommended portion of 911 that might do it pouring a whole bottle of 911 in this is a famous move yeah. bad move really I mean, bad move maybe i mean depending on you know how big your fuel tank is i mean this all plays key roles yeah right? yeah, yeah okay overdosing can we yeah. can we settle on that <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah don't don't if it says to use an eighth of the bottle for your size tank uh, don't use the whole bottle it's not going to give you eight times the better results yeah. that this is not how it works yes. uh kerosene the reason i don't recommend kerosene we did an, a lost episode it never got published with these guys from amalgamated yeah. uh they're a chemical manufacturer for industrial applications so large semis large fleets they would buy you know 500 10, 000 gallons of of additive now their chemistry is so far advanced and so much more concentrated than what you would buy on the shelf so their argument was anything you buy on the shelf is only going to have a minimal effect because they have to water down the, the actual chemicals in there to make it an affordable price point so when you buy a small bottle of right. 911 it's really 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 watered down from what the effective ingredients right. are yeah. um so there's this this balance you play there. Now kerosene itself, uh, what what they had said is that when you do this, it might work. You 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 have a diesel; it'll run on anything that's combustible, right? You just need to shove fuel in there, and if it can build the heat through compression, it'll, it, it'll explode. Yeah. You could run raw alcohol, right? Mm -hmm. So why not buy a bottle of Everclear? You can get drunk if you don't if you don't need it. Uh, that's a rough night. Anyways, um, Paul knows from experience. What I would say is that kerosene, the the chemical properties are going to strip lubrication. Yeah. So, no. so you're 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 stripping lubrication. So I mean, you're not helping but, your engine in the long run. You're hurting your engine but by you stripping also have lubrication. But you to look at it. All the anti gels that are on the market and all these things. I mean, anyone that's from the Midwest that deals with the fuel that we deal with this yeah. time of year, it's stripped. It's shit. Like you, there, there's no debating that. Yeah. So it, again, it gets really tough. Uh, I have a couple buddies that work in the oil industry. Um, uh, actually right over the border lake geneva wisconsin there's like a i'll call it a refinery or whatever but they manufacture fuel you know? sure and uh they disperse it to a lot of the gas stations in uh, the northern illinois and southern wisconsin area um and and the thing that he was you know explaining to me this some time ago you know they add their own additive and right. then you go and then you add your own additive now the problem is is you don't know what they're adding in is for their additive because there's a couple different additives you can run well you go put additive in your truck and it's the opposite additive to what the additive was that the fuel came with you're mixing chemicals You're without knowing yourself yeah. so i've always been you know apprehensive of that this is the first time in my life where i've had the luxury of parking a vehicle in a garage you know whether it's <laughs> at the shop here or at my own house same but same. um you know nonetheless i i like I said, that is the first time that I have honestly ever ran into this. Yeah. So I'm not going to just jump to any conclusions. You know, I have 12 years of historic values to fall back on. Right? Anecdotal experience. You absolutely. Know? So I'm not going to just jump to conclusions and change what the fuck I'm doing. Gotcha. So Gotcha. No, so, no. And I, and I don't disagree. And like I said, if you're able to park inside the garage, it's all kind of, for you, yeah. a moot point, it's right? Totally like, different. It, no, no big deal. Uh, for you listeners out there, this is why I would advise against kerosene. This is this is why I would, same as Chris, I would coach you into finding the right fuel station. Mm -hmm. uh, we all talk about it here. We have one that's really close to our current shop. Um, I've always used them. I've always had great results. I will not fill up my tank unless absolutely necessary anywhere else because of exactly yeah. like you said, the fuel's already treated. And that's why I asked about the cost because mm -hmm. I noticed that at the fuel station I go to, the cost creeps up. Every time it gets really cold, yep. it gets more expensive yeah. to get fuel. Now, that's a, some supply and demand, well, of and course. That's another thing. But there's also a cost of additive, which yeah. is one of the reasons they at least rationalize increasing diesel fuel right. prices in the winter. Mm -hmm. So awesome, man. Okay, so so we've got into diesel gelling. I did want to circle back. You had mentioned the Diesel Insights video. Mm -hmm. What's funny is the Diesel Insight video we recently published got a lot of a lot of passionate responses. Um, so in this video, Nick talks about how to treat your emissions equipment during cold starts. Yeah. So not really going through like older trucks not being able to crank over in the cold we kind of assume hey if you have emissions equipment you got a newer truck anyways it's probably 2011 or newer is really what we're talking about the stronger running dpf equipped trucks um oil temperature catalyst temperature the right way to warm up the truck you had mentioned you still use remote start you let your truck idle for 15 minutes help our listeners out why why is that kind of different than what nick had recommended in that video um so a couple things number one um 
I don't like being cold. I don't, <laughs> I don't wear jackets. I don't wear hats. I don't wear gloves. So um, I, I, I like don't like s- being cold, but won't yeah. wear any warm. So warm I want to walk out gotcha. of my house, get into the truck. I want my my steering wheel heater, <laughs> my, <laughs> my seat to be warm, um, which is the main. Honestly, that's the main reason. Sure. Um, do I let the truck idle that much or that often all the time? No, like I truly don't. Um, but again, I just, I want the warmers. I want the truck to be warm when I get in there. Plus you have to also keep in mind that I'm not letting the truck idle f- ice cold. Like the truck's in the garage right, running, you right. know, so again, it's a little different. Um, uh, but if I'm at the shop here and I park it, you know, outside of course, and I start it, I let it run for two, three minutes, get in it and, and, and hop home. Gotcha. The nice thing is the truck's been sitting out in the sun majority of the time. So it's not <laughs> as cold, but, uh, I don't know. Like, I just feel like as I start to, as we get into the winter months and I might not feel the best, I feel like that cold kind of just goes through my body more so than being yeah. a little bit more resilient to it. I hear you. So basically I'm just admitting I'm a total bitch. But, uh, <laughs> agreed. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Uh, we're definitely going to get some, uh, some responses from our, fr- our fans in Alaska who keep yeah. asking us to come up during the winter months to, to <laughs> yeah. see some diesel stuff. Not a fat shot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to go south, man. Um, okay. But, but, uh, and the reason that's different in, than what the video suggested is in that video, Nick talks about with an emissions equipped diesel truck, you probably already have a lot of pre-built in protection. So your transmission is going to raise the shift points a yes. little bit to try to heat up. Uh, the EGR is not going to be active, yep. right? So it's going to try to heat up the engine. It does a lot of things automatically to try to heat up the engine. And one of the best ways to heat up the engine and heat up something that I think a lot of people don't think about is heating up your exhaust mm-hmm. uh, so that you're getting efficient catalyst temperatures. And efficient catalyst temperatures are going to get you more efficient regen, which means better fuel mileage, longer lasting emissions equipment, and you'll actually know when you can start to lean on the truck yep. without hurting it. Yep. Uh, and, and so that's one of the things that we try to remind people of. Oil temperature is still important. You still want to make sure oil temp. There is a difference between 30 degrees outside, negative 30 degrees outside. Be reasonable. A lot of guys brought this up. Clearly, yeah. we, we got a lot of Canadian uh, yeah. viewers out there. We love you guys. Sorry that we weren't a little more specific there. Hey, if it's negative 30, just like Nick says in the beginning of the video, oil temps are still important. Yeah. Watch your oil temp. Uh, but oil temp's not the end of the conversation. Yeah. Right. Is your truck warmed up and ready to, to go out and kind of lay into the mm-hmm. throttle and have some fun with. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's some differences there. So big shout out to Diesel Insights and Duramax Tuner, another great sponsor of the show, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, one other thing I wanted to talk about today, Chris, was some of the new products that have been rolling out yeah. over at Duramax Tuner. Uh, one of the big, big hypes right now is the Roxor. Yeah, um, you know, for our listeners, I mean, we've we've done a couple episodes regarding the Roxor, the Mahindra Roxor, in the past. Yeah, but um, it's a company out of India, right? And they manufacture like uh, tractors and ag equipment and a lot of crazy, crazy diesel application. And, it, and well, we even found out when we did the interview with them that like it's even beyond that too. Yeah. Electric motors yeah, and yeah. all sorts of other stuff. Uh, huge industrial manufacturing yeah. company. This is a company that has not been stateside. They tried doing something back in 2009 um, didn't work out and you know seven eight years later they come to the table with this cj5 or cj4 looking thing and they're pretty cool <laughs> a like, jeep willies clone yeah. uh for those of us that are not into the jeep lingo so hard it's, it, it's a ton of fun you know i've had the luxury of driving ours i've gone to a couple of demo shows and things of different like motorsport companies out this way yeah um four cylinder diesel four, turbo so, yeah, so five speed it. trans 2.5 liter common rail injected um you know so common rail system uh, small little 30 millimeter turbocharger <laughs> EGR no DPF um, makes 52 54 horsepower stock on our Mustang dyno um, Nick and the guys in the R&D department and we're able to squeeze a uh, pretty much double over double so over double yeah like 115 to 120 wheel horsepower um, we started in r and on uh, aftermarket clutches we have two stages for the tune we have a little boost increase valve set up similar to the <laughs> lb7 duramax um and now we're we're limited on the turbo and uh nick has a couple different sites and we're going to start to test that next realm or that next stage if you will on a bolt-on turbocharger yeah um the thing here, like, you know, being working closely with Nick, you know, I look up to Nick. Nick's like a mentor of mine. He's been for years. I see where his passion comes from and when he gets excited about something. And it's something is, to me, it's it's, it's a platform that, you know, uh, to me, a thousand horse truck gets me going. Right? He's been around that a hundred <laughs> times over. 
but to to be a you know state of the art you know state of the art and, and do something new you know in a platform that's not even a year old like that's what drives him and that's what motivates him yeah. so you know um it the requests are coming in guys are interested we've been posting videos on the i'm not even going to get into the the facebook page <laughs> it's crazy um but it, it the reception uh it's very well yeah. um and uh, it's a strong platform and uh, they're cool, and you know, I'm excited to be part of the ride. We're starting to kind of recruit dealers and end users and things like that, which is awesome. You yeah, know, build relationships with guys other than you know guys that are just solely in the the diesel truck side of things, but in a you know a recreational. No, there's no. It's not a demand, right? Like the, this is not a necessity. Right? This is all extracurricular. <laughs> it's a UTV. Yeah, I yeah. think that's one of the things. Maybe uh, if you haven't listened to our previous episodes, you might have missed there. So it's a UTV. It's a Jeep Willys, like 1946 Jeep Willys yeah. clone or lookalike. Uh, it comes, yeah, like Chris said, great little diesel engine. Hey, it's fun. Even at 52 horsepower, yeah. it's fun to get out and kind of oh, beat yeah. around. But it, it's a trail or a ranch style UTV. Yeah. It's not road legal. Yeah. Nope, nope. Well, uh, it's got kind of small tires. Yep. Uh, there are some states, Arizona. Utah, a yeah. lot easier to get those things uh, street legal. Mm -hmm. There's some packages. We're starting to find some other guys that want to work on, you know, getting them on the roads and things like that. The really cool thing, like Chris said, is more than double the horsepower, 115 horse. I'll tell you what, we got a little tiny empty lot next to us, yeah. and uh, we built our own, or we kind of yeah. etched out our own little track over there. And the things rip. It's fun. It, they it's are fun. so much fun. That five-speed manual, you can't find a UTV with, well, a, with a stick shift. No. Well, you mean, know, there's it's, a couple paddle, no, not even paddle shifts. No, yeah, no, there is not. It, it's not really a thing. You know, and what, um, what was really cool, too, is like when we went to, uh, so there's this company out here in our area called Nielsen Enterprises, Yeah. and they are a retailer of the the rock store and we went to one of their open house events in the fall and they had this badass like off-road course built and we took ours we took the stock one we took our we took our tuned one we took a couple can ams and stuff out <laughs> blast like i yeah. can totally see the one thing i'll say is as i get older like a I hit like a midlife crisis this past year, I think. And <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to buy another car. I'm going to build something, go fast. There's a whole nother side of life than just getting out and going fast. And like that off road style, oh, yeah. like that's a lot of fun. It's so big. So well, that's why there's fun. so much drawn. That's yeah. why I think a lot of Jeep guys are going to get into the Willie or going to get into the, the, the rocks or right. Yeah. Right. right. Uh, I think they're going to get into this. I think a lot of guys are going to see this as, as a really cool kind of crossover vehicle yeah, absolutely. Uh, where you can't get these features on something else. So if you're a guy who loves diesel engines and manual transmissions and you're looking for a side-by-side -side, this is a really serious yeah. option yeah. You, you know this is it's, it's way cooler than the electric can-am we have here i'll tell you that i take the the rocks or over the over the commander any day yeah. uh so yeah so so a lot of cool stuff there uh, on about, the horizon how about the other project that's kind of lingering that we've been getting into more l5p stuff yeah. Okay, so L5P tuning, full launch. Uh, yeah. It's been a, a crazy reception. This is something that we knew the, the price point was high on. Yeah. Uh, so we'll just start there, start the conversation there. Yeah, we'll start. Let's we, start with that. You and I had had offline conversations saying we've never seen a price point like this for these customers. We realize you have some experience right. paying this level of tuning for standalone, high-end, custom, car stuff. built yeah. car stuff. Uh, but not like daily driver car no, stuff, no, you know. Not not to get so, into a truck. So so know? we we were very skeptical over what would the reception be. Now, it, HP Tuners has come out and lowered their pricing, which has helped lower the, the end pricing a little bit. Right. No, and that was something. So that was nice from to see when this when this recording is taking place. Two weeks prior, uh, HP announced that uh, they were going to take their ECU unlocks from twenty five hundred. That's just the unlocked ECM to tune an L5P right. down to seventeen ninety nine, which was a huge splash in the market. Yeah. Um, shout out to a, a special customer, um, Matthew Merrick. So he's a YouTuber, up and coming, you know, the YouTube channel stuff, and you know he uh, he works closely and talks closely with like uh, Duramax Jack, who we've had on the podcast. Yeah, for sure. And uh, we just did uh, the L5P unlock and, and tuning emissions equipped through Calibrated Power, right? So he's doing a review on that. Uh, I think it might be live when this records. Awesome. Um, and also, it's really cool to get a different perspective. That's the first end user that I've done anything with. He went through one of my dealers. Just so happened that he ended up doing the install himself. 
super nice guy, super fun, very uh, energetic and, and really excited <laughs> about this. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, this is the new normal. You know, uh, the L5P is kind of paving a way of, you know, this is what the new era of diesel tuning might look like. We saw some of this with the Cummins, you know, years ago, yep. uh, where you had to buy a separate tuner and do an unlock and all these things. And now getting into the L5P stuff, I mean, it, it's expensive, you know, and it's it, a process. Yeah, it, it's a different, It's a, like you said, it's a different price point. Yep. It's a different process. It's also a different result. This is something that, that I think yes, that, that I've, I've started thing. to hear other guys talk about is like, what did 550 rear wheel horsepower cost you when you had an LB7 or an LLY? Well, let's, let, let's dive into that. Like, yeah. let, let's just do it. Price points, okay? Okay, so l let's say let's say you're going for a budget build transmission. You're still 4,500 bucks into it. Yeah, I mean, you, right? go, buy, you go buy an LB7. Seven, right and I, again we're talking two different price points from two different customers yeah okay I don't care who you are or what you say that's the reality but you go buy the ten to fifteen thousand dollar truck mm -hmm. okay or when they were new they were still thirty forty thousand like, dollars right let, let's not get that twisted <laughs> right? so you have an LB7 and you want to make 500 horse now on that 500 horse you're gonna make a thousand foot-pounds all right you're talking to trans at five you know four to five thousand mm -hmm. you're talking a lift pump you're talking little things like a boost increase valve, an inlet horn. I mean, these are things that, it's a, is it a necessity? No, but it's no. highly recommended. You're probably going to need it yes. if you want to hit it more than once on a dyno. Yes. So, yeah. So, I mean, the reality of it is, is you're going to be 6,000, give or take, 6,000, 7,000. If you want to see that 1,000 foot-pounds get into the 11 to 12 realm, you're talking a turbocharger. Right? Yeah. So, now you get an L5P, okay? Big money. You know, a higher dollar truck. I get that. Sure. Literally for four thousand dollars, you have the truck tuned, making five fifty wheel horsepower, and twelve hundred fifty to thirteen hundred foot pounds of torque. Now, let's cut the horsepower set out of the equation. Let's talk about that torque. Yeah, that torque is something that you couldn't get out of an older truck unless it was twin turbo <laughs> and it had some slightly <laughs> modified injectors. Like no, for sure, the L five P is a beast. And it is insane to drive on the street. Like yeah. I'm not a Duramax guy. I've owned a couple. Not my truck. That thing is nasty. It is too. And I think that that tune only performance is something that we we can really start to talk about as yeah. we go forward. Uh, we're seeing improved emissions equipment with these yeah. that that are holding up and lasting better. Uh, we're able to dial in and measure some of the the, the catalyst temperatures much better. Have a much clearer picture oh, yeah. of what's going on. Also here uh, at Duramax Tuner, they've they've gone the extra step and, and added some additional sensors to really measure air fuel ratio yeah. post turbo. A lot of our trucks, uh, are... which is something that I, I don't think is is common place. Yeah. So so it, it has to do with what are you getting? What is the result? Yeah. You know, you're driving this premium truck, which is what an L5P is. Because to be honest, it's very rare the person you find who needs an L5P. They no. probably could have bought a used truck and done the same job. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's a premium truck to begin with. And then you really start to think about it. What do you want out of it? You know, do you, how do you want it to drive? How do you want it to feel on the road? When do you want it to perform? How do you want it to perform? Do you want it to stay that clean, quiet, massive yeah. amount of power, massive amount of torque? And I think, that's possible now. And that's, I think the, with, the effort is worth right. it. Right. And I think with that, you know, relating to the last podcast that we did with me and Joe Hager, where we talked about the emissions on versus the emissions off truck and talking about the ruggedness of one versus the, the, the streamline options of another, right. Sure. These types of things, you know, going back to like the LB seven versus an L five P let's just talk about LML versus L five P because to get an LML at the power level of an L five P reliably, I mean, you're probably within a thousand to $1,500. Oh Yeah. You know, by the time you do the lift pump, and I mean, a trans isn't in a complete necessity, but probably if you a really, converter. If you were yeah. to go into apples to apples, or you know, it, it, it's it's similar. Yeah. You know, but uh, you know, one thing like you said earlier, you know, the air fuel gauges and stuff. That was something that we started implementing on our uh, test trucks back in 2015. My yep. Ram, yep. and then the 2.8, and then uh, one of the LMLs that we did, and then now the L5P. I mean, it's a very resourceful tool that. You know, people that add me on Snapchat and have me on Instagram and stuff are like, what the hell is that gauge? Is that a boost gauge? No, it's an air fuel ratio. They don't know what the fuck it is. <laughs> In the gas world, I mean, that's a staple gauge. You have right. that on everything. Right. You, you have know? to, yeah. So it's just one of those things that allows you to be a little bit more understanding of the dynamic of how the engine's operating. Absolutely. So really cool. Cool, man. Uh, hey, guys, last shout out I wanted to give WC Fab, somebody who's been a huge part of Diesel Performance Podcast, somebody that we're very grateful for mm -hmm. being a part of the show and helping us out so often on so many projects. Yeah. 
Um, WC Fab does amazing fabrication work, amazing powder coating colors, and an endless amount of options with them. But something else they also provide is superior customer service. Uh, I know I've had problems uh, where I'm trying to install a part, and it may link up to a WC Fab part or may be a WC Fab part. And the ability to call there and get help from an expert uh, and actually get my problem solved I always find to be extremely valuable. And if, if for nothing else uh, beyond their amazing fabrication work and their amazing quality and craftsmanship of all of their parts, uh, really their superior customer service is one reason I know I'll always be going back yeah, to them. Absolutely. You know, uh, dealing with Jason, you know, Brittany, the guys in the shop, you know, Jason's brother, Ryan, who's been on the podcast several oh, yeah. times. They're all very intelligent people. And there's a difference between calling a shop and just getting someone that regurgitates information versus someone that does it hands on and deals with it on a day to day as in a true, you know, uh, enthusiast themselves. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Having someone that has that passion, you, you can't mimic or duplicate that. You either have it or you don't. So, you know, I always enjoy dealing with Jason, you know, and, and the guys over at WC Fab. For you that, said it, man. And hey, one place we're going to see him is at Ultimate Callout Challenge. That is coming up. It's crazy to think Gee. that we're already, we're, we're recording this uh, near the end of January. Yeah. Uh, so I'm sure it'll be up around this time. Uh, yeah, so Ultimate Callout Challenge coming up in May. And then in June, Diesel Power Challenge. We are officially the, or I'm sorry, we are the official podcast of Ultimate Callout Challenge. Okay. High five. High five. Air five. Nailed you it. See us doing that. But, um, the noise but believe it. Mouth. Yep. Uh, so so we're, we're cool on that. We're really excited about that. We're really proud of it. Uh, it's something that we were grateful to have an opportunity when uh, James Brendel first reached yeah. out to us three years ago yep. to get involved on the podcast side of it. Uh, and now Duramax Tuner Calibrated Power is getting involved in a bigger way. There's also going to be a live build going on uh, by Alligator. Yeah. Uh, we'll be doing an in-depth interview with uh, uh, Matt Chambers and probably JK uh, from Alligator Performance. Uh, I got lucky enough to be asked to go and do some live announcing for that. So you guys are going to be hearing the, the podcast throughout the week or throughout the weekend of Ultimate Callout Challenge will be pretty much the recorded version of our of our live mm -hmm. build. So, so they're going to be building two different trucks live on stage. Uh, throughout that build, we're going to be having... Uh, sponsors and people who have been involved with the build and, and users and vendors who are at the show come up and, and sit down and talk about the build and talk about the products and talk about what's going into this build and why we're doing this. So we're really excited to highlight that. Uh, also, while we're there, I just talked to KJ Jones uh, from Diesel Power Magazine. It sounds like there's a possibility that we could repeat last year. Uh, so okay. this is unofficial at this point, right. but it sounds like there's a possibility. The leak information. So yeah. for the newer viewers, if you will, uh, last year, Paul and I had the luxury of sitting down in the uh, announcing tower with KJ and announced all of the DPC competitors of 2018. Yep. Yep, and so, then and then I got to go to DPC right, last year without yeah. Chris. It I was a go. wonderful time. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I felt like the the work that I put in by myself without Chris was stellar. Yeah. So uh, what the reality <laughs> is, guys, is like a week prior to everything. So it's no secret. Like we'll yeah. just dive into it. I was going through a divorce that time it last was, year, yeah. and I was yeah. like, damn, I have lawyers I have to see, and I have <laughs> judges I have to you know meet up with. So a week out, I was like, yeah, it's just not going to work. And he was pissed. I was. I was. And he doesn't like mad. me that much. I was. <laughs> <laughs> well, well. Here was my thought. It was like you're already divorcing the bitch. What is she gonna be mad at you? Like fuck her. Like we got shit to do. Um, I hope somebody plays that clip for her oh, at some point. Oh man, for real. Oh, that's uh, awesome. No, okay, but no, you're 100 right. Yeah, I wanted to go really bad. I know. So, way. so this year it sounds like yep. Chris is gonna get to go. Our producer Justin is gonna get to go. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit different style at DPC. Last year I tried to do announcing through all of the events myself and yeah. like running around with microphone and i'll be honest i caught a little bit of live feed where i'm running next to the sled pull track with yeah. my microphone and i'm like that was that was not good audio yeah. um so i won't be doing that this year we're, we're going to take a, a different approach a, a, little a little bit a little bit don't expect don't, we don't want to raise their expectations no. now chris it's still us but you right? know what we're professionals when we're together <laughs> we're professionals yeah nailed right? it Nailed it. So I need a babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> so we're really excited for all of that stuff coming up. Uh, I can't think of ending on a higher note than that. We just talked okay. about new products, new tuning, rocks or stuff. We talked about gelling. Yeah. We've I mean, real quick, ultimate call out challenge. What have, else? We have guys that send us emails. It must be cool to work where you work and deal with what you deal with. Guys, first glimpse. This is what we yeah. deal with. Right, so you it's, a, it. it's a rough life. Yeah, no. there was a time when I got paid to shovel cow shit. So just it wasn't always easy, guys. Um, oh, you got paid? Yeah. <laughs> huh. 
On that note, uh, this has been Paul Wilson. And Chris Emke. Thanks for listening. The Diesel Performance Podcast is brought to you by Calibrated Power Solutions, home of DuramaxTuner.com. Calibrated Power develops emissions-equipped calibrations for a wide variety of diesel powertrains, including the Duramax, Cummins, Power Stroke, John Deere, Case, New Holland, and many more. For more information and great customer service, check out CalibratedPower.com or call 815-568-7920. That's 815-568-7920. Two guys with $60,000 plus vehicles <laughs> <laughs> ratchet strapped to each Just other. Just doing some hood ratchet. Yeah. I'm not paying for it. Total. Yeah. Fuck that. <laughs>